Uh, today's book talk is going to be about mostly about this book by Michael Schmidt, 8990. But I'm uh, also going to talk a little bit more about Michael Schmidt himself and his work. Uh, you'll notice that it's uh, uh, portrait mode this time, hoping that the comments will not interfere with the images. I'm also recording this and ideally the talk will be on YouTube uh, very shortly. So I decided to focus on this book today because it's sort of maybe a little bit underappreciated. It's, uh, I don't think it's that widely known. It's kind of an exhibition catalog of sorts. It was uh, produced at the occasion of uh, an exhibition at Munich's Haus der Kunst um, in 2010, which is 10 years ago, which is, you know, I don't know, feels a little bit like there's already 20 years after this, these events and 10 years ago now feels like an eternity with, you know, especially with the virus and everything. Um, so this is maybe the, I don't know, this is not really the bookend of, of Schmidt's uh, work about Germany. Um, maybe it would be worthwhile to briefly look at, at some earlier books. So this was just reissued, uh, one of the books that he did about uh, Berlin. This is a uh, wedding, wedding is a part of Berlin, of West Berlin, then West Berlin. And this is sort of Michael Schmidt's new topographics view of uh, that part of the city. This was just reissued by, um, I think, Walter Koenig Bookshop, and you can get this easily. I'm just going to show you really briefly what this looked like. So this is like very 4x5 uh, view camera uh, views of this part of, there's the cover picture, this part of, of West Berlin. Um, Thomas Wesky saw to it that this book was going to be reissued. It came out, I think, last year. And uh, it reminds me very much of, uh, you know, where I grew up. I didn't grow up in Berlin, but I grew up in, in West Germany. And this kind of generic, soulless, fast architecture with a lot of concrete was really very common um, in West Germany. Now, of course, maybe the claim to fame, Michael Schmidt's claim to fame is, is this book, which was also reissued, uh, I think, the year before, Waffenruhe. Uh, facsimile reissue. This is the well-known book um, that everybody talks about for all kinds of reasons and I think it's a really fantastic book. I always had the feeling that the book actually is maybe a little incomplete. It feels like there's something missing or it could have been fleshed out a little more. It's slightly unfair of course. Um, it, it is a great book on its own and it's a book that I think every photographer ought to study. It's uh, very moody, very subjective very somber look at, at at the wall at West Berlin at this frozen state uh, in the city with uh, just a very small number of, of portraits uh, included. This was published in 1987. The uh, reissue I should note there's a lot of text in it. There's an English language reissue which has all the text um, translated. The text is, is very hard to read as you can tell. You know there's it's just a block of text um, and is essentially is a collaboration of sorts with a, a German writer and photographer, a guy named Einar Schleif that you might have never heard of. Einar Schleif was actually photographing along with Michael Schmidt and he was also a, a writer. He wrote theater and he wrote um, text and it's likely that Einar Schleif came up with, with actually the title of, of the book. Um, and then there's the book, unfortunately only have the English version, Einheit, English Unity. You know, honestly, the only difference between these versions is the title. There's no text in the book. But, you know, me being German, I'd love to have the German version. But anyway, this was uh, done at the occasion of a major exhibition that happened at MoMA in 19, I want to say 1996 or maybe 1998, something like that. And this is like a very uh, cerebral, very complex very difficult book. I, I uh, had some requests to talk about this book, but I thought it would just be a little bit too much, a little bit too complex, a little bit too deep. I would have to talk about this for like, I don't know, two or three hours to even show you all the references. In this book, Schmidt uses a variety of of approaches, uh, straight photography and, um, you know, photography photographed of newspapers. It's a little hard to see, but it's actually a picture from a newspaper or from some from uh, some sort of document. If you look closely, you can see the sort of, I don't know if you can see that, probably not, right? Well, I guess you can see, if I get it closer, 
you can see the, uh, the, the printing pattern. And it has a lot of images uh, from all kinds of sources. There's a lot of people, and this is maybe even clearer uh, to see, this is like a, a vernacular of sorts, an archival photograph. And it dives deeply into the history of, of Germany, of the then uh, reunified Germany. Most of these people are going to be unfamiliar to uh, non-Germans, I think. And then here is more something that sort of along the lines of the book that I wanted to talk about uh, today, which is this book. As I mentioned, this is a sort of an exhibition catalog, not really. It was made at the occasion of an exhibition and it deals with these two years, uh, 89, 90. Um, you know, I would, I would love to say that I was more conscious of, I lived in, in West Germany and at the time I was more conscious of what was actually going to happen and what was happening. Unfortunately, I was not though, because in 1989 I started studying physics. I moved away from my hometown for the first time in my life and I was everything was just brand new and overwhelming and so then the wall came down I don't know two or three months after I started studying I was just like one of these other big major things so I didn't really pay all that much attention to what was going on it was only later that I, I, I sort of turned my attention to uh, uh, to to the to the history of the of, of, of Germany and to, and to these events I know at the time I was opposed to the kind of reunification that happened simply because I thought without a reckoning and without some discussions of you know the past and of these different two types of different regimes that there would be a lot of problems and uh, and you know I don't want to claim that I was very smart but I, a lot of these problems have actually arisen with East Germans feeling betrayed taken over belittled and you know I can I can I can see why that actually happened so here's um, 8990. Uh, this book is dear to me for a variety of reasons. It deals with Germany, but also I had it, I bought it when I met Michael Schmidt for the first and only time, and he signed it to me in 2011. So the people who are familiar with Schmidt will be familiar with this kind of photography. It's uh, this kind of black and white that doesn't really have much black and much white. It's like very, very gray and somber and kind of depressing but it is this type of photography that that Schmidt uh, was was going for he was like interested in all these shades of gray I mean and, you know he, he argued that black and white ultimately are just shades of gray as well which of course is uh, you know literally true and you see this picture here most of these pictures are these generic landscapes or these buildings of generic uh, these pictures of, of landscapes that feature these generic mass-produced ugly buildings uh, there in Berlin he photographed in Berlin you can you can find these buildings everywhere in Germany uh, after World War II a lot of these buildings were were erected and and you know with very little regard for whether they would look nice or look nice later or so we'll see a bunch more of this and then you see here in this foreground the focus is on the foreground on this patch of dirt with some you know I don't even know something is growing there um, this is reminds me so much of of uh, my upbringing and and you know this kind of you know these environments that you would just grow up in and you didn't really pay much attention but it was sort of rough and gross you see the concrete here you know concrete doesn't really age that well I know there's this uh, this architectural type of uh, of buildings called brutalism, you know, built of concrete. People love them or love them, past tense, but they don't really age that well and they get really grimy and gross after a while. So you see like with the graffiti and, you know, this is like a staircase, you know, I mean, it's literally like an indestructible staircase. I don't know why they had to use poured concrete to make this. Um, so I hear these, these buildings. I thought about, I looked at this book again last night and I thought this might be this shadow here might actually be one of those. Uh, they have these uh, these columns in Berlin called Litfaßsäulen, and they're used for advertising, and it's kind of that shape. So it might be actually a a, a shadow of of such a building, there's, uh, of such a, a structure. There's also another. I don't know what this. There's like another shadow here. And this is just you know this is these pictures don't really they don't I don't know if they mean anything. You just sort of basically have to feel them. This is, um, you know, what does that say? You know, this this corner with this 
growth there that has been around long enough in principle there's no reason why this couldn't look a little nicer but it just doesn't um, you know it's, it's just very typically West German here so the wall had fallen had come down so um, this is one of those guard towers here that existed along the border um, with some buildings in the background um, abandoned of course uh, people came in put graffiti on these towers on these structures This is sort of the outlier picture. I don't really know why this picture is in the book. It's not only the only picture with people in it. It also feels like very dynamic and kind of strange. I don't know if this really fits. But, you know, who am I to criti criticize Michael Schmidt, right? And here's the first time that something as interesting is happening, which I knew, like, what, what is potentially interesting about this picture? It's just another picture. But then when you remember the very first picture here, Uh, if you either ignore the sound, it's just my cat destroying my, my environment while I do the work here. So this is literally the same building, uh, the same buildings, and you see it's just a different view. Toby, a uh, different view of uh, this situation here. So this is something that, that Schmidt was doing in this book quite a bit, and we'll, we'll see a little bit more of that. This is maybe my favorite picture in the book. This is an old, uh, well, not, not that old, a uniform of the... Uh, I think the, the border police or something, the East German uniform that somebody hung up to either sell or it's just hanging there. I think it's just a fantastic photograph. And then here these um, typical Berlin buildings in the background with all this rubble in the foreground, which I don't know what that is. It looks like concrete or some metal structures. This is very typical. In, uh, at the time in Berlin, this was very typical. These are like the firewalls of apartment buildings. And there were large areas where there were no buildings, and this is what you would see. You would see these buildings in the background and then these firewalls. All this stuff is like now slowly disappearing because new buildings are being erected uh, so people can, you know, have their fine condos and their gentrified stuff. Um, so, recreation, you know, this concrete table tennis um, structure here in the foreground. And on this, it's not really quite clear what that is. Um, a shutter of sorts. You know what, I'm gonna have to pause this presentation for just a second and get my cat out. Oops, the cat is out. All right, never mind. Okay, he was causing mayhem. Um, so this might be some shutters, burn marks on there. It's not really that clear what that is. Somewhat abstract. And then something like this. Um, this is photographed in such a way that you can just barely read here at the top Springer Verlag, Axel Springer Verlag. As a non-German you wouldn't know what that is, but it's sort of like a, a building with a history. Axel Springer Verlag is the company that produces the mass tabloid uh, Bildzeitung, which is this right-wing, rebel-rousing, neo-fascist uh, uh, tabloid. Uh, they, they probably complain about me calling it neo-fascist, but it is very populist, very right-wing. And they have been, you know, it's sort of, it has been in the past, the Berlin students, when they were protesting, this was one of the focal points of their protests, protesting against this right-wing mindset that was being spread to people. Uh, here you see the wall, uh, and then these destroyed structures here. So this is from the other side of the Axel Springer Verlag building was right at the wall. So this is like in what used to be East Berlin. Overturned car, who knows how old this car really is. And who knows where Schmidt found this. This then is maybe a little bit Waffenruhe-ish, a little different than Waffenruhe, I would want to say. In Waffenruhe this would be more somber, darker, I don't know how to describe it. This is a little bit more detached maybe, like a different view of, you know, and you see these, uh, you know, you also see German photography in here. So, you know, if you know the German photographer Heidi Specker who photographed these trees against uh, buildings. So there's like, you know, you can't walk away from all these different references. Um, you see people, this is like, some of this stuff really still exists in Berlin. You can still find these locations. Um, this is just a sign for, you know, what Lotto is. Uh, it's like, you know, Kino and all that kind of stuff. Um, so this is how, you know, these, these, you know, and you notice like these lamps here, these generic lamps and these generic looking buildings and all this concrete. It was really a very soulless uh, 
build environment. And so this is like something completely different. We haven't seen this before. It's the same picture twice. Um, mirrored. This trash can. Um, you know, you can think about what that means or why he would do that. But this is like an interesting strategy. Schmidt was not afraid of using the same picture twice or using variations of the same picture, which I think is a really good idea. And of course, with, with all we've seen so far, you know, we can just say, you know, all this stuff is just really made for the trash, like soulless, without much thinking. Yeah, an echo maybe of of Waffenruhe with, you know, this. now there's a, there's a hole in the wall and you can see through and see the other side. I don't know where all this is. I know Schmidt lived in Kreuzberg, so and he did a lot of walking and a lot of photography. Later on, when he wasn't focusing on certain parts of Berlin, like Wedding, um, a lot of photography was done in Kreuzberg. If you go to Kreuzberg, well, assuming you can go back at some stage, you can still see these buildings. There's actually a playground here in the foreground. They have a gazillion playgrounds in Berlin. Interestingly, this, this building looks a little bit modernist here. I don't know when that was uh, erected. And then here again, this is the base of, uh, it looks very much like the base of one of those observation towers near the wall, made of concrete. Here's some scratch graffiti on the wall with these weeds growing in the foreground. So there's, you, you can tell there are certain themes that go through this book. These, these uh, soulless, characterless apartment buildings, these structures that are really made for, who knows what they're made for, they don't really look like they're made for human beings. And then these neglected plants or plants that just grow, you know, nobody has to take care of them to just grow and some grow because they're supposed to grow there and others just grow because they grow there because nobody's going to take care of it. Even this playground here looks just really disgusting and you know how would you want to play there and this is like the sand here and you can crawl into this contraption maybe you live in one of these buildings it's just very very west german even the entrance to whatever this is is made of concrete so these buildings are a lot of these buildings of course are still around in, in berlin you can find them fairly easily as long as you don't go to the heavily gentrified areas, uh, Prenzlauer Berg or Mitte, in, in large parts of what used to be uh, West Berlin, you can still see this stuff. Neukölln, uh, Kreuzberg, further out west in Wedding, those kinds of places. The, the, the built environment in the, the East German or the former East German equivalent looks a little different. Not all that different, you can sort of see the difference, but it's the same principle to went into these buildings. Okay, here's another pair. So you see the uh, the wall here, or parts of the wall, and then this Schmidt-esque photograph here against photographing these dry branches hanging up a tree. This is something that this is something that he used very prominently. This kind of visual strategy was used very prominently uh, prominently in Waffenruhe, whereas this is something that looks more like unity Einheit. You know, he did change, Schmidt did change his, his visual, visual strategies quite a bit. Whenever he had finished a project, he would often start with trying to do something completely different, doing something new. So this sort of mixes a bunch of stuff. Um, so here's another, another pairing. You see these fragments of the wall. Uh, you know, some of these were actually sold abroad. So, you know, and even I think in New York, they have, New York City, they have one of these standing somewhere. And then a photograph in, in the woods somewhere. I, I have the book Natur. I, I just remember I have that. I have two more books that I didn't even include in this presentation. So everything is run down. Everything is sort of destroyed. Everything is in flux. The only thing that exists is nature. And it's a nature that's not very pleasant, except for maybe this one picture here, which is not so bad. And that, that was very Berlin at the time. Berlin was very much in flux. Uh, a lot of that is not around any longer. If you go to Berlin, it looks a lot nicer now. But you can still find these locations. It's not that difficult if you just walk around. So again, a very 
Waffenruhe style photograph with you know the, the foreground, the, these plants preventing you from seeing the background, which is this river with who knows what's, what else is there. Again, this reminds me just so much of growing up. Maybe things where I grew up weren't quite as trashy, but you know, these like grids here in the apartment buildings, that was like a basement. And maybe you would have like a root cellar, well, whatever, think of a root cellar, you'd have it like a basement storage unit that you could go into, and with, of concrete, of course. And then everything was just neglected, you know, these cheap materials that people would tear apart or would just fall apart. Um, I mentioned Heidi Specker before. It's not quite Heidi Specker. I photographed this in color, uh, this kind of uh, ph photograph. If you want to look up her work, you get a pretty good idea. Again, this Schmidt like strategy of making a picture. You know, you could have just stuck your camera through this thing here, whatever that is, this partition, but he didn't. So you have this out of focus stuff in the foreground. And then cut off. Here's a car, there's a car. This is one of parking lot slash parking garage. Who knows what that is? So there's a lot of looking through things and obscurations going on, which is quite a bit in, in line with uh, a lot of these uh, Schmidt strategies that he used both in, in Waffenruhe and in Einheit, more in Waffenruhe um, than in Einheit. So here's, here's more nature. It's actually the first kind of pleasant nature photograph, if you want to call it a nature photograph, because it's not really all that pleasant. So another pair. And then this is the same trash trash can that we've seen as a pair before. So you have the same picture three times in the same book. Yes, you can do that. You have to do it well. I mean, you know, you, your mileage might vary if you think this is actually successful and this can be done or should be done. But there's no reason why you couldn't use the same picture twice or three times. And there's no reason why you couldn't have it next to each other. There are things that you can do with that. Um, so this is something to maybe think about if you're a photographer and making your own books. Um, Okay, so we're sort of nearing the end of the book now. Now it becomes, uh, this nature photograph becomes very abstract. You see the tree branch and all these, these flowers. Again, same strategy, sort of this similar, I mean, the relationship between these pictures is very obvious if, in, in a sort of a way, like in terms of the content, like this might be the same plant or a similar plant, and now we have these, these grates. 